It's nice to have that parking pass, though. Those are those are really expensive. Yeah, no, that's that's a really cool perk that you got. I will say they are. Those passes are about four hundred dollars. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. No, it's so, really nice to have, especially if the weather ever. Yeah. Well, and they changed the policy, so they're like, eh, we'll actually start paying for this. It's like, thank you. That's nice of you guys. It's it's pretty yeah, absurd it's true, because. Guess. I mean, especially you think about hourly employees where it's like, oh, we're not, we're, so what, I gotta work for like two weeks before I make enough money to park at my job? That's nuts. Yeah. Like. It's insane. Two or three weeks or something at my part-time job, $10 or whatever. It's like, dude, no. that's pretty, it's pretty cold. Yeah. To do that. It's like. Yeah, the fact that they don't even have like employee parking. Well, what I imagine is some guy gets the job and uh, can't afford to park there. Yeah. Um, and then is like, you know, has to ride his bike like five miles into a not so great neighborhood or something. Or take the bus or something, yeah. Yeah. Or that. I guess there are those scooters. <laughs> yeah, there's the lime scooters. You could take one of those. You could take a lime scooter. It's They're really cheap. Are they? Yeah. I haven't even looked at it. It's like a dollar to start riding, and then it's like, I think it's just like a couple cents. It's like per minute. Mm hmm So, I mean, really. And what, do you like scan a card or something? It, you, yeah, you, there's an app. Okay. And you just pay. With like NFC communication or something? I don't know what that means. Uh, near field communication. Or something. Um, you pay like with your debit card or whatever on the actual scooter, but you can, but I think you can pay on the app as well. I don't know. We should try it sometime. It might be kind of fun to just, like... Tool around. Well, it's cold now. <laughs> well, it's... Might have been something to do in the spring. It's not that bad. Come on. But, um... No, I know a lot of students who take them, and they're, like, really ideal for people like us who only live, like, a mile, mile and a half. They're, yeah. like, they're like, yeah, I get to campus in, like, ten minutes, and you just drop it wherever. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about your bike getting stolen. You don't have to worry about your bike getting stolen, or, um parking it somewhere, locking it, you just grab another, and they're, they're everywhere. Yeah, I guess that would be kind of nice. Yeah. I mean, the thing about the bikes for me anyway is the exercise, though. True. Yeah. No, it's nice, true. nice, but I don't know. I guess it would be interesting to try it out and see if it's, like, worth it. Mm -hmm. Especially for something like, for instance, when we want to go see a movie. That's a great idea, honestly. Like, when it's we don't want to ride our bikes and we don't want to drive. Oh, BT Doves, I found out this super late in the game, if you park in the mall parking lot and you buy something and show them a receipt, oh. your, your parking's only like two bucks. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's a really, that's, see, that's the kind of conservative uh, common sense governance, you know what I mean, that they yeah. have. Yeah, but like... now, the city, it's going to be so goddamn greedy, they're talking about um, getting rid of free parking overnight and on Sundays downtown. I'm like, there goes all of your business. People are not going to pay for that. Yeah, I'm not coming. Oh, it's going to be dead. I don't think. The city hello, is, hello, is so viewers. stupid. BTW, AKA we live in Indianapolis. No we live in Indianapolis. <laughs> viewers, if you've ever been to Indianapolis on a Sunday, a Sunday before like 2 o'clock and there's no Colts game. Ghost town. Oh my gosh. There's parking galore. You yeah. will not have a it's a any ghost trouble town. finding parking. It is a flippin' ghost town, man. Yeah. Yep. Gotta edit that Pac-Man tag again. It's our ritual. But yeah, that's that kind of, like, greediness that really drives me crazy. Yeah, I mean, well, the other thing about it, to me, is, like, it seems like every, every place should have a free time or a cheaper time mm -hmm. you know what i mean like for starters there's so much low business time anyway it's the same thing with movies like with the movie pass where it's like you realize theaters could have been doing this the whole time just well, I mean, for the hell of it they do like matinee prices i know but i mean but yeah no, they could have been like it's like they they're showing those movies that are like a month and a half in yeah you that, know. no it's true like, like amc or whatever theater it's like oh Buy our specific movie card, pay ten dollars a month, and you can see three movies. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. Like, and they could get away with that. Yeah. I just, I just think that, like, I don't know. 
Or, you know, you can do it where it's like you get a discount on food or something. Whatever, you know? Even though that's where they make their money, but... Um... Yeah, no, it's true. I feel like, and I don't know if that's um if that's like a city idea. I I don't also don't know where with this parking thing. Where is that money going? No, it just goes to the government. and They use it to. No, it might. Go, I don't know. I don't know if well, those parking meters if they're private. Oh yeah, no, that could be. But I mean, like, even if they're private, they still, like, the company gives the government like some kind of contract or something. That says, hey, we'll manage this, but we get all the money from it. Mm -hmm. But we'll pay you. 20 million dollars or whatever. Right. For the oh, shit. contract or yeah. something. I don't know. Governments sell out everything. Sure do. Our government does anyway. Indiana sucks. Uh, although Mitch Daniels is doing some pretty cool stuff with Purdue. Did you see he, that story? Which one? Um, I th Gosh, what was he doing? It was like... They're, they're like... Uh, the low, like they haven't raised tuition in like six years. I know they have a years. tuition freeze, yeah, which is awesome. And he's like getting rid of all the unnecessary administration and stuff, which good for him. You know, because like man, there, there's a lot of overhead and <laughs> ridiculousness in uh, academia. Good. He, I mean, he wasn't a terrible governor. I mean, yeah. I mean, I was re I was reading the thing about it, and I was like. You know, me, I'm so anti-academic administration. It's the most... Like, I'm like... It's the most overinflated shit it's ever. It's like, what do you do? You know? Yeah. Like, I know that's, like, what everybody says about the government, but in, like, academic administration, it's like there's, there's like, ten vice chancellors, mm -hmm. and none of them have any power. It all just goes to, it's like, the... It's just a title. Yeah, it all just goes to the head of... The same thing happens in hospitals, though. Yeah. The exact same thing. It's like, you'll have some, like, yeah. director of la-la-la, and they make, like, $400,000 a year doing jack shit. Yeah. You do wonder about it. And then everybody else who actually makes the hospital run makes nothing. Yeah, it's like, you know, for somebody who makes so much money and is so, How quote, the fuck did I get in first? I don't know. But I think you've been up there for a minute. Makes so much money and is so important, it never seemed to notice when you're not there. Right. <laughs> yeah. Never seem to notice when you're not there. Mm hmm. Um. It's, it is strange. I mean, I, I, I would guess that they're just managers of departments, but they're like three times removed from it. I love this level. Yeah, you do. It's just so charming. Yeah, but apparently, Mitch Daniels is like. Just, like, doing a bunch of really common sense things that you have to wonder, it's like... Where has this been the whole time? Yeah, like, at, yeah. well, I think there are actually things that IU has actually been doing. I think, actually, Purdue, despite being, like, you know, the engineering campus is a little behind IU. I actually think IU is ahead of the game in a lot of ways, from what I've... Because I was reading about some of the things, and I was like, this seems like something that IU's already doing. Um... Because he was talking about, like, well, we're digitalizing all the official paperwork and mm -hmm. documents and requests for funding and all this sort of stuff. It's like, I'm pretty sure that's how IU is already. Uh, we have, like, a whole system for requesting. Uh, well, I mean, it makes sense because IU is a much bigger institution. I mean, there are how many campuses and... Yeah. At, I think at Bloomington, there's the same amount at that campus as Purdue as a whole. So. I mean, I mean think about this, right? You're talking about... I mean, I know that academic institutions have got research, they've got all these really somewhat high-priced employees, especially when you talk about, like, medical and engineering and mm -hmm. math and stuff, mm -hmm. and the facilities to uh, train all those people and yada, yada, yada. Um, but I, I want to say in the story it was like, oh, they, they managed to cut, like, $500 million. Dang, you, dude. You're talking about Purdue, you know, as a good school and... But, like, the campus of it is, like, a small town. You know, yes. it's like a little town. West like, Lafayette is Purdue. Yeah, it's not It's not that big of a place. Mm -mm. Um, like, everybody who lives in West Lafayette has something to do with Purdue, Like, I feel basically. like it's... I feel like the footprint of Purdue... I haven't, like, been all over it, but it's not unlike the footprint of, like, IUPY mm -hmm. in terms of size. And, oh, Purdue is massive. Oh, is it bigger than Oh, that? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I've not been all over I it. think to get across, like, the whole campus, like, from one side to the other, would take you, like, 25 minutes. Yeah. 
Whereas, but, like, you can get across IUQI's campus in, like, 10 minutes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's doing some, hopefully he's setting an example. Although I was, like, literally uh, just poking around the Purdue Global site or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, just, like, literally just looking at it. Their website's not nice. No, it wasn't. I, I remember when I took, like, one class there, I thought they were, uh... I, I was looking at something for, like, grad school there. Like yeah. Like, a, a program, and I was like, this is the shittiest website. Yeah, their they're IT stuff, again, I'm pretty sure IU's got the jump on them, which is why I was saying I think IU... IU, I think, is, like, ranked as one of the most connected campuses in terms of, like, technology and stuff. So good for us. I think, they, I think they are, and I think they are pretty good about it. It yeah. is pretty neat that, you know, Ivy Tech is so successful and so big. Like... Yeah. More people should go to community college, honestly, instead of going to a four-year university. Like, I'm gonna fucking trade, man. Yeah. Well, I think I think kind of like the new thing is gonna be like kind of the never-ending education thing, kind of like we have going on, where it's like what I think is gonna happen is people are gonna go to school <clears throat> for a thing that they do. And then, you know, maybe maybe even with the way, like, labor is going, you know, there might be, like, Ooh. there might be, like, more labor limits, you know, on hours and stuff because of just not, there not being enough work or something like oh, that. Oh, like automation. Well, I just yeah. think, I was telling my class, I was like, when I was, did I tell you about when I was talking to Robert? Because when he was, uh, lost his job. His it, union job? I don't I think he was in a union. He was oh, in I hotel he chain management. Oh, I didn't know he lost his job. Yeah, yeah, I guess I forgot to tell you. Well, uh -huh. yeah, he, like, they were implemented a new computer program uh -huh. that did all his work for him. Uh -huh. And they're like, uh, you Turns know. Turns out we don't need you. Yeah, uh, we don't, yeah, we don't need you anymore. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know that same program is going to be implemented at all the other places, too, probably. Sure. So, maybe nobody needs him anymore. Um, that sucks. Right. And, uh, um, where was I going with this? You were telling your class something about it? Oh, I was just saying, like, when I was talking to him about that, and I get the impression, um, that, like, people aren't working as much as they say they are. Like, they're oh, at no. their jobs. For you know 40 I mean? hours, yeah. Yeah, for the time, the allotted time, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. And, but he was like, oh yeah, like, people are always, you know, doing other stuff mm -hmm. in my job, like, all the time. I wasn't doing a whole lot, you know, and it's like, so what? Like, what I feel like that bubble do? is gonna burst, man. Like, I feel like... Honestly, it should. Yeah, no, it should, because I think we need to wake up a little bit here and be like, um, you know, it, this stuff is supposed to benefit people. Right. You know, like, we automate a job. That's supposed to be something that benefits people, not just, you know, it's like, well, I just cut a job that was $50,000, so I get to add $50,000 to my paycheck. Right, like, right. That's not the benefit that we have I in mean, mind. I mean, I can honestly say I work my 40 hours a week. Yeah. I work that whole time, but there are people in my office who don't. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, I just, I was real bad in this race. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like I feel like that's a bubble that might burst. Like I feel like we're gonna get especially with the access to software and like tracking and stuff, is you're just gonna be able to A replace a lot of people and B track how much effort is actually required for this kind of stuff. Right. And, you know Yeah, because I mean there's like you can actually, like, quantify how much people, how much work they're putting in into the office, like, at my job. Like, you can yeah. see, like, how many referrals are they doing? How many phone calls have they made? How many calls have they taken? And I, it's like, there are yeah. some that don't do as much. I mean, I don't feel like I'm killing it. I'm, you know, I, I mean, the way it is is, like, you can't really avoid anything. You got it. I'm not avoiding anything. Mm hmm But, um, it's just the kind of thing where it's like, I don't think people are as tapped out as they're saying they are. No. And, uh, yeah. I feel like we're one algorithm with a stopwatch away from some, like, massive... What in the world? 
uh, like some kind of massive unemployment. My thing is it turned on again, the safety thing? Yeah, it is. What the hell? No, you're cheating me this whole time. I'm not trying to. Cheating me. Cheating me out I of want victory. I my old car. I don't want this crowd. <sighs> yeah. So, you know, hopefully, maybe, maybe part of this, like, between, uh, you know, when we're playing a game between a major game, Mario Kart, or whatever, maybe we end with playing one of those NES co-op games. <laughs> That's what you're gonna do. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that Ocasio-Cortez says she's going to be paying her interns a minimum of $15 an hour. Oh, that's really cool. Is that up to her, though? Yeah. I mean, she can have other people get paid less. Maybe I'll apply to be an intern. <laughs> yeah, for real. Although, I feel like that's probably still not enough to live in. I mean, see? the fact that they're paying the interns is obviously a it's massive a, step up. I mean, yeah. We were talking about people that they I, literally were working seven days a week just I, to do that. I think it's absurd that it's like, dude, if anyone, like... The government doesn't get to do that. No. You don't get to not pay people. Fuck government. no. And especially the fact that, like, I mean, she literally said, she's like, you gotta walk the walk. And, yeah. you know, people are gonna get paid if they work for me. So, and it, it looks, it's a really bad look if you're, like, you know, a senior Democrat in the Senate or in Congress and you're not paying your interns. Well. Yeah. I mean, I remember uh, there was a story, I think it was Asif Manvi, of course, or bro. Mm-hmm who had it during The Daily Show, yeah. and he just, like, he went, <laughs> this labor union was paying people, I remember that. like, seven fifty an hour to protest for them, and they were... To, for the, $15, yeah, for the, the higher for wage. I don't think it was for 15 I think it was some other, well, maybe it was, I don't know. Maybe it was. Um, they always do that shit. Unions, they hire, like, those people that stand outside, and they're like, shame on you, whatever, for, like, man... I didn't realize how, like, much that shit was just helping me, because I am, like, dying in this. <laughs> um, but, uh, I was like, wow, I'm doing great. Um, those people are hired for, like, minimum wage a lot of times. They don't work for the union. Yeah. Well, that's what he was calling out. He's like, you know, he's talking to the union yeah. president or something like that. He's like, he's like, oh, we're fighting against, uh, you know, the uh, injustice of the whatever, da, da, da. He's like, oh, okay, is uh, one of the perpetrators of that injustice uh, you? <laughs> you. Um, yep. And it's funny, because it's like, it sucks, because it's like, I do support unions, but, man, they've got some really shitty people in charge of them. Well, you just have to wonder, like... Honestly, it sounds bad, but it's like, you gotta get those old-timers out of there, and you need some young people. Well, it, all, it also, the other thing oh, about it man. is, like, not that I agree with, like, a corporate approach to, like, unions or something, but it's, like, has it ever occurred to you to, like, be, like, hire somebody who didn't just work as, like, a, as a, you know... Oh, my God. In, in the job that they're a union for, like, in the union yeah, for? Yeah, like, right. It's, like, oh, you know what we need is a software designer or something in here. Something so we can Thank you, do game. something new, you know? Yeah. Like... Because it's, they're not going to be here in like 10 years. They're all going to be gone. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, whatever you're doing, you're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. You're not making it. Nope. And uh, if you want to, you want to think about changing it up a little bit. Fuck. Hey, this is bad. They should hire like some general, some retired general or something to be the union president. But because oh, the way, like Jesus. the way the union presidencies work is, I, I don't even think most of the time they're even challenged, and I think it's just like you know the room full of people who are in it just vote on it, and they usually vote for the guy who points to the other guy and is like, <clears> hey, <throat> I'm leaving. Vote for the for that guy. Right, right. I think that's usually very, how it goes. Yeah. Because the internal politics of it is very like. Since everybody's kind of in it together, everyone's on the same page, it's kind of like a 2016 Democratic primary kind of thing where it's like, yeah, 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 we're all here, but we all kind of know that this was decided for Hillary Clinton, you know. Forever ago. Yeah. Just like in 2008, apparently, but Obama actually won. Oh my god, I'm doing so badly. <laughs> um, 
Is it? Does, look, okay, look at what my. I'm not even controlling it. It's doing this. Oh, you've got the. Is that why? Yeah, you turned on the. Uh, God. Motion that, controls. Okay. That was. Oops. I just turned on mine. That was driving me. All right, ready? Fucking bananas. Yes. <laughs> driving bananas. That's why I was doing so badly. I'm like, what is the problem? It's okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's your own fault. Mm-hmm. Just kidding. Yeah. Yep, we are in for some interesting times. It's going to have a bunch of 35-year-olds working 20 hours a week as baristas wondering what the hell's going on. It's like, well, we don't have... Where are I mean, the jobs? It's really weird, but it's like... I, I think it's really absurd that it, people in my parents' generation are like shaming people, but it's like, dude, people got a job either right out of college or not even that. Or not even that. Not even out of college. Yeah. Had it for 20 years. You Get know, a house. 30 years, 40 years. Have two cars. Bought a house. Got it. Yeah. And now it's like, I feel like you can't even prepare for a job anymore. Because no. like, when I'm looking at some of the technology stuff, it's like whack-a-mole. You know, every job that pops up is like a complete, requires a completely different set of skills and way too much experience and it's like oh this is an entry-level job but you need five years experience in yeah. whatever it's like that's not what entry level means and it's really weird because you just get to this point where you're like i mean are you going to get to this point where now you you can't even start a career in a certain field because you're 40 you know and you're like just getting started in like it or something no, I don't think so. I feel like IT is actually one of those... I think It seems like pretty equal opportunity, honestly. You, you just need to be able to do the job. Yeah. Like, clearly that's one of the fields where, like... No offense to people who work in IT, but, like, looks don't matter. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Got a face for phone calls. Yeah, you don't need to look good to fix a computer. Yeah. You need to be able to fix a computer. But I do. Just, yes, yeah. Just saying, I look real good. I look real good in my chair. My Herman Miller chair. Is that what it is, Herman Miller? Mm-hmm. Or even, like, you know... Oh, my God. I'm just not with it. But also, same thing with, like, you know, medicine. Like, you don't need to be attracted to be a doctor. Unless you play one on TV. Unless you're mictoring me. One of the secretaries told me at work, uh... That our chief of staff, he's, you know, he's been there for a long time. She's dropped way back. But, uh, she told me that our chief of staff, when he was, like, younger and worked in the OR, he's a handsome guy, um, that all the nurses called him McSteamy. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Just because I know him as, like, a 50-something year old. No, he's no, not. No, I'm kidding. No, he's incredibly sweet. I just... So you find someone else besides me attractive. Mm-hmm. I can say he's a handsome dude. Hmm. That's very interesting. Mm hmm. Hey, this will become the new theme of our, sh our show it's, uh, Mario Kart and stuff. And talking about stuff. It certainly is easier to talk about stuff during this game. Than Anything else? What well, was the other game we were playing? Oh, Donkey Kong. They require some serious concentration. Well, yeah, I mean, this is just like, you're just doing it. Let's do it! Let's go! Oh boy. Right into the fire. I'm glad they got rid of the, like, takes forever to fall off something. Mmm, yes. You'd be totally wrecked in the uh, Mario Kart 64. Yes. You fall off something. Horrible. Oh boy, that's a rock. Yeah. Oh man. At least I'm basically done with my sociology class. It's cool. Just have to do the final. BT Dubs. I was like, just for the, you know, heck of it or whatever, looking at um, the HE double hockey sticks. Heck of it. Go on. 
looking at like the requirements for an economics uh, bachelor's from IUPUI. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so <laughs> forget about. I totally forgot about the uh, racket that general ed requirements are. Mm -hmm. and, like literally half the degree is, is gen ed. Like other stuff. Uh huh. It's it's a crock of shit. It's a little it's a little excessive. Well, that's I feel like you could probably cut that down by like a third or so. And that's why that accelerated program for the nursing degree is so smart. Is well, that it's like, you know, come on. I mean, I'm not trying to be like mean or whatever, but I gotta say, the language requirement is probably the worst one. Um, it's ridiculous. That yeah. and the fitness requirement, but language oh, is pretty bad. Yeah, dumb. Because it's like, you're not doing it for enough time to get any permanent understanding. Well, and like, what is this, high school? I have to take a gym class? Yeah. And it's like, because, I mean, I want to learn Spanish. Right. And, and I'm not close to being fluent in Spanish, and I took it for, like, five, six semesters, because I had to do it more than once. Yeah. Um, and, uh... Um... Because it's the kind of thing where it's like, dude, if it's if you don't complete it, like if you don't go all the way through with it and actually learn the language, then mm -hmm. what are you doing? Like, yeah, you're just like, oh, I picked up. You're just dicking around. I, I can say, oh, you know, I can say hola and mm -hmm. me gusta, you know. My name is Jake. Yeah. I like cats. <laughs> me gusta yeah. libros, you know. I like books. Yeah. I mean, I can... You basically sound like a first grader. It's nothing I couldn't do if I wasn't in a country and typed it into an app on my phone. Correct. You know what I mean? So it's like... I don't feel like yes. there's a whole lot of value added to that. I mean, it's not about, like, lack of culture, but it's like... I really don't think that anybody should be required to do that if they are doing nothing related to it at all. I, I could see it if you're doing like English or liberal arts because if you go beyond that, uh, beyond a, uh, undergrad degree, a lot of it, you're gonna wanna learn a different language to you know, translate whatever thing or whatever, it's I, useful. I told you what I did my like senior thing on, is it wasn't my capstone, my capstone was bullshit. Um, I did my like final journalism paper on we had to pick, like, an, a journalism, some like, some sort of institution, like a magazine or a newspaper or a media, whatever, and how would you make it better, basically? How would you improve upon it? And mm -hmm. I picked I picked the school of journalism. Mm -hmm. I was like, here's how I'm going to make this better. And I literally said, get rid of those gen ed requirements, and for your first two years, you're just learning journalism, and then the rest of it's an apprenticeship. So that you actually have true working experience in either a newspaper or a magazine or something, or, or a news station. Well, I just feel like there's literally, like, a one-credit class people could be taking of things that it's, like... I, like, it's things that I don't... Again, you know, we were in school in, like, 2008, 2009. There were no jobs. <laughs> no. You know, like, there was nothing. Nope. I was talking to another guy who was the same age as me who was in college in, like, Alabama or... I don't remember where he was. I think it was. Really? I had three shells and it got through it? Ah, oh, fuck. And he had the same exact experience as I did, where it was like, oh yeah, I literally was working on campus because there was nothing out there. Right. And I just took whatever job I could get on campus. Gotta work, yeah. Just trying to get by and make a little extra money for school. Right. Um, That's what happened to my sister. Yeah. I mean, she, you know, she's first generation college student, so didn't really have any kind of advice as far as like, oh, you should be trying to get internships and things like that. Yeah. She was like, she worked all the time. Yeah. I mean, she just worked at Walmart and yeah. she worked at the college bookstore. So then she literally graduated in 2008 when the recession happened. Mm. So she just had to get into retail because she, she hadn't set herself up for success yeah. slash there wasn't anything. Yeah, well, you also, you don't know. You don't know that it's no. like, I don't, like, I wish I had known that it's like, look, a huge percentage of this is... Who you know and... Like, well, not necessarily that, but it's like, you want to, you want the stage of your career to match the stage of your life. Right. So it's like, um... Yeah, I mean, I wish, I wish, and I told my cousins who just started at college, you know, this semester, I was like, I'll tell you what I wish I had known. 
spend extra time if you have to work or you're planning on working or whatever get a job doing something related to what you, you want to study do it, yeah. and what you want to do yeah like 100% like that will help you so much because at the end of your four years if you've got four years of you know even part-time work experience at least in the field that's gonna be huge and at least it's like a reference yeah you know yeah like my sister didn't even know that you were supposed to get like water you know like water's a recommendation from your professors she, yeah. she was like, I didn't know that, you know? Yeah. Had no idea. Nobody remembers her now. Or... No, exactly. She, so she's like, great. What am I supposed to do? So, I mean, she's going to, you know, get her master's in teaching instead. Want to do one more? Sure. So, yeah. It's cold in here. Is the heat on or no? The oh, fan's on. The stupid fan. The fan is still on. We were at 68. Should I pop it up to 69? Sure. Alright. Ready? Yeah. Yep. A lot of things that would have been nice to know. Yep. I definitely wouldn't have studied journalism. <laughs> I would have... Uh, put in something like economics because I was much better at math back then since I just came out of pre-calculus. I was looking at the math requirements for the economics thing. It's like the second, in the second semester, it's like survey of pre-calculus of pre or something. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like, oh man, I could have done this when I was in, came out of high school. Now I'm hey, rusty. You get a job with school of medicine. I heard that they'll pay like, it's something like, and they'll pay for tuition in like any field. Mm-hmm. It's like 4000 per semester or something, that's which is pretty good for like IUPUI. That's like three classes or something. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. And that's more than you'd want to take while you're working. Right, correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wish I had done something a little harder in terms of because like you when you do the soft like political science stuff, like economics is it just makes me so mad because anytime you see one of these jobs and it's like oh well if you have a degree in economics school right you can do it and it's like oh come on oh i know i mean journalism is a fluff degree it's not i mean i feel like i learned stuff and i definitely became like a more well-rounded thoughtful person but like i don't know i mean i would have studied something else it's it's like or communications like Again, there's a reason football players major in this crap. Yeah. Because it's all easy classes that even if they are, like, you know, actually doing the work on their own and not just getting, you know, A's all throughout college without trying, it's not hard. Well, not to be crappy, but I think that one of the one of the number one routes for somebody who's invested so much time in sports is then to go into entertainment. Oh, duh. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So they cover the sports. That makes sense. They, Good point. I mean, I'm just saying. Well, and their sports journalism is actually doing okay as far as journalism goes. I mean, when you watch any kind of commentary or anything on it. A lot like, of times they're athletes. Yeah, yeah. Even if they're athletes that played in college. You know, it's like, oh, we got the commentator. Oh, he played in college. And this, he was, you know, like Tim Tebow did commentary. He, I'm sure right. he, made, he made more money doing that probably than he did... You know, I've heard he's sports. really good at it too. Yeah. Um, well, and also, I mean, like you, you learn how to talk to people. You learn how to, yeah, just communicate effectively. You know. I feel like and going into entertainment is a major alternative route. Sure. Oh. Especially after your career in sports, even if it was just in college. Well, and you do have a unique insight into it. I just was. I, it was really funny. I, who, were you there when I was telling somebody about my idea that every athletic scholarship should be a six-year scholarship instead of a four-year scholarship? Yeah, you've told me that before. I agree. I think that would solve so many of the problems with education, attainment, and bullshit that happens for yeah. athletes. Wow, that was a quick level. Um, I, mean, I just think, like, if you made it a six-year scholar, because it's, it's a joke that they pretend that these guys are and girls 
are learning anything when they're, especially on the basketball team or the football team. It's like, you know, they're going like two practices a day and all the other stuff that they have to do to be on the team. And it's like, oh yeah. Well, it is funny too. Like, can you also, can you imagine if like, if all public universities were, everything's paid for, I mean, that's going to cut into recruitment for like sports and stuff. Because people, they don't have to rely on sports to get into college now and pay for it. Oh, that's a good point. You know, so it's like, I'm sure... That would be a good route for players to start getting paid. <laughs> they should get paid. Yeah, they probably should. They're, they're, the schools are making money hand over fist off of someone else's labor. They should definitely be getting paid. Or it at the very least get a stipend or something. It's nuts. Yeah. There's not enough money in the world, Julie. No, there's just no money for it. I mean, the only way in which I would say it's a little bit, I mean, is that I mean, they, there are a lot of athletes, <laughs> but they do pay the coaches like, you know, fifteen million dollars. Oh yeah, they could cut back on that shit. It's like really you couldn't split like, up. A... I'm sorry, that is one of the least important jobs in the entire world, and I don't give a fuck. You can't convince me otherwise, because sports are not that important. Well, the funny thing is, is like, not only is the coach, the head coach getting paid, like, $15 million, they also have, like, you know, a yeah. coach for every position. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, the exactly. They've got coach, they've got the... Defensive, whatever the fuck, yeah. The line coach. The, right, and they all make money, too. Yep. They're not exactly... They're not exactly eating poorly, either. Especially oh. those line coaches. But, you know, they just can't grant tenure to, uh... <laughs> to any professors, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have to have, that, they got rid of that. We have to have professors make bare bones money and work at a bunch of different community colleges just so they can barely get by. And, yeah. Yep. Gosh, why isn't anybody going to, into education anymore? Yeah. Weird. Well, wasn't there, like, all these complaints now? I think it was at Ivy Tech, actually, because, you know, adjunct professors kind of get paid the same no matter what. Right. And it's like... Um, I don't know, maybe they pay them more depending on the field. They probably do. Oh, I'm sure they do. But it's like the amount of time, like, it was like they're having trouble getting more experienced professors or something because it's not worth the money at all. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, no. yeah, I'll, I'll teach engineering, you know, or something. It's like you're qualified to be an engineer to Why make, like, a ton it? of money. Why would you teach it for, like, eight thousand dollars a class over the semester if that's going to take like 10 hours a week i think some people might just do it for fun no i i i think that it's a really good way well one of the best things about teaching the basic level classes is that it keeps you yeah seeing the material and i think that's a value to it to the people who teach it that is not quite respected in terms of like whatever but it like that's the way to keep you in the zone basically and be like oh oh yeah I, I don't even know where i'd be in terms of like i mean i am a little burned out on it now teaching a little bit philosophy yeah like oh. i am a little like and here we go again yeah i mean i'm not doing as much to diversify my own interests to keep myself fresh on it like i could be changing up the readings it could be doing this yeah, doing that. i mean you have so many other interests i think yeah i think that's part of the problem is that I'm really trying to move on but um and if you do that's fine um but it does keep you in it and it does keep you thinking about it and i can i can imagine that's definitely the case for things that i don't know like math or something like that like, my the best math teacher i ever had was when i had to take like some like low level math class at iusb she was a high school math teacher but yeah. she just came in and taught you know like low-level classes and she was amazing i just think nowadays it's like oh um, yeah no i mean you have to be a good teacher to get to people in high school because in college it's like i don't know teaching at least for me as an adjunct it's like you're kind of like a badger you know you kind of like come in and like you teach your class or whatever and you don't have that much association with anything else except for 
the area of your class. It's not like a community. It's right. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to make it that way. You're just sort of like a nomad. But um, it just feels like it's like okay, I came in, I taught my class. Nobody sees you teach your class. Nobody. Yeah, really, like you're like, not really part of a community at all, even though it's a community college. I do wonder about. Um, it is kind of weird, like teaching my class though, and being like. And having not seen somebody else's intro to philosophy class, except for the ones I took when I was a freshman, I wonder, like, A, am I actually any good at this? Because you don't really have a metric compared to other professors. And B, like, man, somebody could be really bad at this, and it wouldn't matter. Yeah. Like, that's the thing that kind of... You have to wonder about the accountability of it a little bit. Because, you know... I'm sure not unless there's, like, complaints or something like that. Like, you know, nobody's popping their head in there and being like, oh, you better be, you know, teaching these kids good. I could, do, be, I could be up there being like, uh... Do, be, do they offer co course evaluations? Uh, yeah, they do at the end of the semester to students. Okay. I mean, they do stuff to get accountability. It's just, like, the kind of thing where it's like, I mean, I could be up there saying whatever I want. It's just, yeah. like, a weird feeling. Yeah, that you're sort of, like... It's like your parents are gone for the first time, and you're like, oh, man, I'm going to make nothing but bagel bites yeah. and ice cream. I mean, not to be, like, it does, well, another thing that kind of keyed me into this a little bit, like, you remember that thing with the Spanish class that you took, and they talked about Cuba? Yeah, yeah. Like, I wonder about that. Like, it's like... Oh, how much, like, oversight there is on this stuff? Well, like, and how much of it is, like, agenda-driven, if you want to put it that way. Sure. So for our viewers out there, which are none, but somebody might watch this, the thing I'm referring to is Julie and I took the same Spanish 101 class, or 102 or something, but with different adjunct professors in different semesters, and they both suspiciously had the same PowerPoint presentation. They know? were doing a, a re presentation on different countries in South America and Central America that speak Spanish. And every country they were talking about the culture and the music and the food and stuff and like what they're known for, yada, yada, yada. But when they got to Cuba, it was nothing but this country, they're only given one bar of soap a month per family and... You know, they don't have cars that work, or they just drive Studer Bakers, and da da da. Yeah. It, there was literally nothing about their culture. It was all about how bad it is. Yeah. And, uh. Which Cuba has a really rich culture. Yeah. 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 Just like, you know, and it's like funny because, like, yep, everything's going great in El Salvador, you know. Right, yeah. yeah it's like in Bolivia and, you know, all these other countries. It's like, but Cuba, yeah, that's the worst one. Right. It's, like, it's not... It's certainly not great, but also, like, this isn't very, like, fair. But it was just very, very suspicious because somehow both these professors, or both adjuncts, got a hold of the same PowerPoint presentation and did the same bit with the same amount of emphasis. Didn't emphasize, like... So it was just strange. And I, I got the impression that somebody whose parents probably fled from, you know, some kind of communist regime, like probably pulling the strings with the adjunct professors and they're like okay so this is the this is the powerpoint presentation make sure you present it you know make yeah. sure you do the you know da 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 but uh it was uh interesting it was odd makes you wonder ah oh, fuck okay. Yeah. Ooh. Good times. Hanging in China. Is that the last one? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Flew by. Yep. Let the good times roll. It's already like 8.50. Dang, son. Where'd the time go? I think the Omaha steaks are going to arrive next Tuesday. Mm. Yeah, man. You excited? And I can get, get you something for real for Christmas, too. What do you want for Christmas? New shoes. Oh. 
Oh, that's not a long time. We were running shoes. Please give me these. No. Nope. You don't want to wear mine? No. I like them. That's nice. What are you going to run in? My other shoes. Oh, okay. I think I was going to go there. Oh, man. It's all your fault. Wario got eight points. Suck it, Wario. That's it? What? <laughs> How did he only get eight points? Got last a lot. Or, like, Dang. nothing. Did they come and fix the garbage disposal or no? Uh, I don't know. But I think when he knocked on the door, I kind of gave him the impression that it was just the one thing. So. Thanks a lot. Got to fill out another order. No, I put in an order for it. Two separate orders. Oh. Well. Well, I'll just have to look. Alright, so we're done, yo. Yep. Goodbye.